Alrighty. We go again. We're back again with another review game. Uh, this one's a bit different. If you look at this lobby, there's Wowie, that a name you might recognize. Karmic and Miggy, also names you might recognize if you're uh, following the ladder. Other than that, Vonny is another name you might recognize. Or Vonson, I should say. Um, but Vonson hasn't played the game in a while, so who do you think that we're looking at today? Is it Wowie? Is it Miggy? Is it the jungle? Is it Karmic? Is Super Yoke in solo? Or is it Vonson in mid? Uh, it's going to be this Kronos mid pick. And there's no injury today, like no smite guru overload, due to, not overview, due to everyone hiding their profiles. Wowie hit his profile, Miggy hit his profile, Karmic kind of hit his profile too, I think. Actually, no, Karmic was hidden, Miggy wasn't, so I couldn't find this game. And I saw a clip of this game on Twitter, as well as some, uh, some comments from, I think, Killer Elite 155 sounds like the person who made the comments. Um, and I was hesitant to doing a video about this strat just due to it being kind of like close knit to a couple of people, but when, with Bonson sharing uh, incriminating evidence of himself, I thought I might do a review of, of him doing this, uh, this build and strategy. So if you don't know what it is, it's like... I don't want to say it's a full split push build, but it is a build that is focused on your objective taking potential. So, we'll see that he does start with Boomba's Dagger, and that will build into Boomba's Spear, because Boomba's Spear allows you to do more damage to structures, objectives, and once you take one of those things, either a structure or an objective, like FG or Gold Fury, you get 8%, and maybe, this is all off the top of the dome, 8% of that health back. So, it allows you to solo tank certain things potentially phoenixes potentially towers right and then once you hit level 20 full build Cronus has insane magical power anyway due to his two as we see here 35 percent i'm pointing like you guys can see but 35 percent in section four of magical power is con contributed to your basic attacks so that's the uh the wheel of Cronus in the red dagger section of his two um put that on with a full build with Boomba's Spear, with Polly, with Obshard, maybe, with a full Book of Thoth. Uh, I wonder if they do Rod of the Hoodie. It depends. There's a lot of different iterations of the build. Some people do Emperor's Armor to really cringe it up. Uh, for example, this game, he could go Magi's to not get, like, knocked up and CC'd out of tower by a Susan. Or he could, you know, the six item isn't necessarily too crazy, but just the core being a Polly. A, uh, a Boomba Spear, a Book of Thoth, really. There might be better iterations, but it's not something that I don't think has been labbed by Vonnie himself. Uh, but we'll see. And we'll see if his playstyle is drastically different to what it would be if you were playing a normal Kronos game. So this rotation, not too different. Sukiyomi juking himself to death. So, early kill. Very good. Raijin able to shove his uh, Vonnie's wave in and get a counter rotation himself. This isn't any error of the Kronos here, of Vonson. It's more so that Krieger won PS4, the Achilles, overstaying his welcome after a quick kill. And that's just, uh, I don't know Krieger's MMR or anything, but uh, it's a pretty noob thing to do is to overstay after you get a kill on that Tsukiyomi, right? So, paying off the Rajin, very unfortunate. Even if it is just an assist, he shouldn't have got anything for that rotation. The Raijin's prize was that mid-wave uncontested, so he's a mid-wave up on Vonson. But Vonson able to get the kill kind of mitigates that. Um, and if you think about it in a way, I think at this point, uh, waves are about... I do have a spreadsheet, I don't want to pull it up, but waves aren't necessarily equal to a kill just yet. Just yet. XP-wise, definitely, but in the, in the gold... Uh, department. I think it's around 220 for a wave at this point, and I think no, two, 220 for a kill. But uh, a wave might be a bit under it at the moment. So the way that like, I may as well talk about it. The way that scaling works is that it's every three minutes when it comes to smite, which is very awkward in my opinion. So every six waves, the scaling and their value goes up. 
All right, I already know that this game state, <laughs> this game state of a bloodthirsty nine kills in four minutes is perfect for this build. It means that neither team is going to be too far ahead. This chaos will soon snowball into more and more chaos. And when there is this continuation of just fighting over not really necessarily anything, it allows this build to focus on objectives in the late game. Now, that's just a skeptical thing to say, right? This game could taper off and become very, a lot more slow, uh, a lot more macro orientated, but that's why this strives so much in NA is that NA is a micro only region, I'll say it. Like, Miggy, Karmic, they're people that, that climb so fast and, and, you know, get pretty high on the ladders because they just kill absolutely everybody, right? It's not like they're masterminds when it comes to macro. And it's why, like, you know, if you think of the supports that do climb, it's people that are play like engaging, aggressive supports, right? You think about genetics, he's playing things like Arnher and he's on this warrior train right now with um, just double void items because he's playing for kills, right? Obviously, a good macro mindset will help you end games if you can see some win conditions, but honestly, Smite ranked is the arena mode on a different map. Let's be honest. If you're able to kill everyone, you're able to do 60k damage, you will win more games. It's that simple. You know, if you do think that you have a super macro-orientated mind um, and your team, all their fighting is limiting you to your gold or plat lobbies, when you are in those low elos, you have to play completely different to, you know, a real game. You aren't in a real game yet. You don't have that luxury to, to play through macro, to play through, like, uh, map states and win conditions and honestly if you are gold and plat I don't think you understand those concepts yet and yes I'm rambling but I think win conditions and power spikes and um, map states flow of the game all these things do contribute to this specific strategy of objective based chronos or objective based builds all right we look at his build a little bit He's going double stacking. I like it. More power means more power for that 35% of your autos. So he goes for the highest power items at a base standard. Now there is an argument that Bancrofts can be in this build because it gives up to like 200 power, but you need to be low, right? So you want to have initial damage onto the tower. And honestly, I don't know if this is a super objective-based game from this Kronos. I just know that I saw his build on Twitter, I saw a teleport come out from his second relic, and I thought that there might be some shenanigans coming through. I also didn't look at the clock, so I'm unsure how long this video will go. But still, I don't think Bonson has played the game in a really long time. I'm unsure about that. I'm not too close with Bonnie. Like, we have spoken a bit. I'd say we've spoken a bit. I really like Bonnie. I think he's a good guy. I think we have like a mutual respect. Both of us do combat sports. Both of us just see the game in an open way. And that is something I will say. His history as a competitive smart player or as a smart player, um, he's been a support player and he has always come across as someone with a super open mind. And um, not off meta, but he's not too afraid to just adapt to whatever's happening, right? So, with this build coming into meta, you either join the brigade of people doing this, or you hate them. And the thing that's so interesting is, I feel like this build gets so many wins, that also it makes people on your own team very upset. Because <laughs> it's not smite as the general population know it. Very similar uh, backlash to what Benny Q has had with his car on priority rank. And I say car on really like visceral in Australian due to Chiron, Chiron being quite similar. He will ult here, but very slow. That's just, uh, I guess, Vonnie not respecting the uh, power spike from the Susan. Um, also, if he did ult, he'll just be further deep back into the jungle, so I think he dies either way. But Mickey once again showing how his micro orientated gameplay to get some wins. He's not even you know, he's top five in damage, so he hasn't even done too much damage, too much damage, but five and two. He's been a part of seven out of ten of the red team's kills. We will see Vonnie coming back. We look at the slash line across the board. Both junglers super bloodthirsty. 
Mid lane is pretty similar across the board. One is a little bit higher up, and with his level 12 power spike, he has bought Battle Port. So, two things this does. Is it troll? This game, very. I will say, very troll this game. Um, and the reasons for that, in a real context, in like a pitch perfect world, all three of these people, honestly, all four of the damage dealers on the red team should be able to deal with the Kronos by themselves. Especially if the Kronos doesn't have Aegis. But let's actually have a look. Will Vonnie get this kill? He gets the auto. Auto one auto, very clean. Bit of a panic three there. Uh, this time, respecting the damage from the Susano. And gets out Susano, Susano. Depends on how I feel. Ares. Why not ult in there, Ares? Ares does have it. Honestly, an ult there is very good. Okay, he does eventually get it. The beads come out here. Just a, a resource pool. That's completely fine. Oh gosh. Missing camps. Unfortunate. I forgot what I was talking about, man. After that kill. After the kill onto the Raijin. Ah yes, the teleport. We'll see. Look, not getting baited by the weird priority onto Ares. Just backing up for a power spike. Very clean. Never mind. Does get baited by this weird fight. There we go. He's just gonna oh, oh. oh dude. Vonnie's front line this game is awful. Another good like game condition. To uh take matters into your own hands. Interesting how that three didn't connect. Oh, very split targets here by the blue team. And he will get the kill here. No Aegis means he's dead. Right, there's a downside to the teleport. And that's what I was going to touch on before all this crazy elongated chaos uh, began. Um, teleport. It allows the Kronos to get to late game a lot faster, right? Due to obviously having a... Uh, instant farming route out of base if he does make a mistake like he does there um but late game it just honestly hmm, how do i go about this segment i think that the big thing is that teleport is on too short of a cooldown so it's very abusable right um he gets the teleport he's able to push down a lane completely and if he does die his teleport will be back up and the impact on the map that he's already had is enough of an issue. So, let's just say it's a 30 minute game. Vonson gets to this right tower, hypothetically, right? He pushes this down, pushes this down, someone kills him at the bird, but before he dies, he puts a ward down. His entire death timer forces the enemy team into a sense of like pseudo security. But as soon as you spawn late game, late game, right? We're in a late game context at level 20 plus. Your death timer and your teleport timer are so in sync nearly all of the time. And if it's not your teleport, it's uh, it's an alt or, you know, a very broken, powerful ability slash resource you have with a relic or an ability, right? So it's very hard to uh, punish someone back to back is, is where I'm getting at. So that's why I think these builds are kind of taking over. Let's just have a little look at what he builds next. Is it a Typhons or is it a Bancrofts? What do you think? Oh, he's dead. Oh, bad misses there by Vonson. Holding his ult because if Rajan ults, that's the reaction that he's waiting for. But he does have a back anyway. He has TP up as well. Just moving back. Probably, honestly, ult tabs or something when he's auto walking back. Very scary looking dive coming here. But if he dives, I actually, if he dies, sorry, I don't think it's that much of an issue. So, nothing bad coming out there. The instant ult I would have judged pretty heavily in seeing if they can get any value, but no need. He goes Bancrofts, more power, just pure power for objectives. Oh, and he gets the attack speed one, perfect. Perfect back right there. So he gets Bancrofts for the attack speed stim. I will read this out to you if you have a look here. For every 30 magical power you have, you get 2% attack speed. That's a great cliff for a build, honestly for all magical ADCs. Now that Telkines is dead, I think that's the way to go. But it also helps having a stim in your kit. I want to see if he goes for any damage here at all. No, he's waiting for the wave. Alright, 
it kind of shows how bad Spectator is when it comes to these things. Like, we can't see passive meters or anything of the like. It's very frustrating because you can't see which segment of the Chronos 2 he's using. Or of the Chronos passive, sorry. I know it is the 2. The Chronos passive is uh, power as the game goes on. Another thing that's really slept on, to be honest. Let's see if it's here. No, you can't read it. I'll find Chronos passive and put it up. And let me time stamp that, because I said that last time. And uh, I didn't do it. I can't remember what I said it about in the adapting video, but I didn't do it. Pyromancer would be a great help for this, uh, this strategy. Right? Crit Fenrir, I'm not a fan of that. Not a fan of that at all. I like the uh, attempt of absolution on the Atlas. It's a very interesting Atlas field. Beautiful. Um, honestly, with his Warlocks fully stacked, I think he's able to take a full HP trade with that Sasano and just walk away. There's no need to ult there. Um, if you want to reset, like, you know, if you're okay with resetting, you're able to just take it and walk away. Obviously, ulting is always safer, and pressing buttons is something that I'd encourage a lot of smart players to do, is to just do it and not think you can get away with things. The contingency to that being, right, he has a full HP item with Warlock Staff. He also has Bancroft's talent, where if he is low, he's able to heal up off camp. So it's not the end of the world to be half HP, right? Especially after getting Susano beads, like you're pretty happy with that trade. But as we can see, he's not at the Gold Fury with his team as a mid laner, and he has a full wave with him. This is where it can kind of start the objective-based mentality. And this damage right here, as as soon as he hit that two, that that tower started getting chunked pretty pretty heavily. We might do a little aerial view just to see the HP of this tower, right? Especially after he presses two. So keep in mind. Whoa! There we go. Let's have a think. Like, it sucks that we can't see the numbers, but that's just a smart objective thing. You know, being able to get a, an, an entire tower with one wave at 17 minutes, not full build, that's, you know, it's pretty impressive, right? Uh, and pretty impressive, or is it pretty cringe? That's, that's the whole divide that this video is kind of about. And that will get even worse when he gets his Bundes Spear online and he gets full build, Chronos hits 20, all the good things, right? So he's going to back here for his fifth item of the game. And he gets a full Typhons? Am I crazy? Did I just see that? Hold up, hold up, hold up. That is the power, I guess, of structures. So his team did secure the Gold Fury. He was able to get a tier 1 tower, and he's able to get a tier 2 tower, as well as like 3 waves as well. Does he farm anything in the jungle? Yeah, he does, he gets blue buff. Look at that 3k back. And he's even greedy for more money. Damn, greedy greedy boy. Anyway, he backs, 3k in hand. No biggie, no big deal. He backs, I wonder what he did there. Whether that's a ward or if the upgraded TP came through. I think the upgraded TP came through a while ago. Unsure. I should be paying attention, but it's it's no big deal, to be honest. <clears throat> and that, actually, in the last video on the adapting, I slept on items quite a lot. I didn't notice that adapting went um, spear instead of eye. But someone was uh, kind enough to point it out in the comments. And that's one thing that I encourage as well, is peer-to-peer -peer learning, right? Don't take everything that you hear from YouTubers or anyone as like a, a law and a gospel because it is objective or is it subjective? It does. I think it's objective. No, no, it is. It's subjective topics on like builds and everything. Everything is subject to change due to like circumstance and... What's the other word I'm thinking? It's... Not unknown, but... Anyway, 
I'll get there after this action. Oh, Cronus is live. So let's say... Oh, this is a... Hang on. This is a tier 2 tower. Let's see the objective damage come out. That's without the two. He does have a... I think the ADC there is doing a bit more damage than he is. I think Wowie was... This is some good... I think they can actually force this. He has a bomb. Mm, nice by Ares to commit something. This is kills at least. Well, I don't know about coming back in. Dying for this Phoenix is always worth it. Right? 19 minute bird. Very nice. The only contingency to that statement... It's, it's worth it if everyone else doesn't die. So that's what I was kind of talking about. Like, things that you do as an individual aren't always correct due to your team following suit or your team doing wrong things. So everything that you do has to be adaptive and there's no one glove fits all in any regards to any moment, right? So I just said, dying for that bird is worth it. But is it worth it if three other members of your team die? Obviously not. So if Kronos was the only person dying for that bird, it would be completely fine. Check out yeah. this so, the context of uh, wording does matter. Hopshard. I don't know. Boomba Spear upgraded. So, Boomba Spear. I do 50 true damage. Du -du 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 -du. Oh, that's right. If you do kill an objective, you get 10% extra power as a buff. That's also... Oh! Brother! He picked up the, the green buff. The green tiki. That is not what you want to do. Sorry for that. I hate it when people sniff. But I sure have rambled a lot this video. Thank god someone hit that effigy. Um, and then he stopped hitting it. Interesting. Raijin just got deleted. Interesting for Raijin to even attempt to steal. It is nearly a 10k lead at 20 minutes. This game has been a blowout, but it's... If you think about it, it hasn't been a blowout in terms of kills. Look, it's only a 4 kill diff. But every tower... Not every tower. Only 2 tier 1's down. On the side of the blue team's map. So only 2 tier 1's have been taken in mid and in solo. But just the uh, complete objective domination by blue team has given them giving given holy shit given them this lead backing here is interesting i don't think it's obviously not good to do let's just hit this bird i i honestly think this might be the most respectable objective based game i've seen like, if you think about it, everything's kind of happened in a nice, um, a pretty free game flowing way. Like, the Gold Fury was already won by Blue Team, whilst Kronos was already in right lane pushing down. Susano had already backed. There's a, there is a lot of PvP aspects coming through, right? His lane wasn't too crazy. He did get hit. Ares was in his lane. Things were good. He only died really once in like super lane. Okay, 22 minutes in, 45 kills. Maybe that's the issue. Maybe NA is too focused on um, things that don't matter. Oh, man. Every time I see Primal Fury, I get a bit sad inside about how meh the buff is and how whatever it is all right we finally get to see the the last slot of this chronos build and it is the poly so this will just like half health a bird as soon as he walks in with his two active half hp especially with if he ever does get efg and he does get a red buff with the attack speed icon on it so let's see if he changes the tiki mask I guess actually that's that's not that's not a bad shout. His pan is only percent pan from Python's here and this. Although this has ten flat, this also has ten percent. No, actually it's it's a bad, it's a bad tiki there in my opinion. He definitely should have gone attack speed. All right, here comes the teleport. Watch this. See, it's just gone. Right, bird, just gone. Ishtar thinks she can do something. She's dead. 
Bird's dead too. He and with this HP, he can go to a third bird. Honestly, with this HP, he could probably take all the birds on the map if one camps on. Like he'll just heal off speed buff if he needed to. He'll heal off a wave if he needs to. And then he can just take another bird within, you know, two seconds, three seconds. Due to the attack speed, the pen, the poly, and the way the Bumba Spear works. But also Kronos is a character. And that magical uh, damage is, I think it's a 1.4 or a 1.6 per attack, like, on um, autos, right? As a 1.4, 1.6 scaling to structures. I did read that a long time ago, so maybe that information is dated. But I'm fairly certain that mages obviously build more power, but their their attacks also just hit harder, even without a rod. So power pot done, wards are completed. Uh, it's a pretty like simple way to end. They could just five mana lane, to be honest. The only scary thing is red team's damage and team fight presence is through the roof. Which is another reason why this Kronos build can probably get away with it. That red team, their team fight is so strong that they would want to five men. But an another thing to kind of have a little little chat about is this build doesn't just shred objectives. It, it's still Kronos. Like, it still one-shots people. Kronos with Poly just... We saw it on the Ishtar in that left lane, it just completely depletes them. So if you are ever in a situation like ending, you probably need to kill people to end, no matter what. So, Fire Giant being looked at by the blue team. It should be a non-contested FG, or a Hail Mary. It looks like it's going to be a Hail Mary. Sukiyomi, able to flank under, but it's spotted out by Achilles. We're going to go have a little look. Bonson kind of trailing behind. He sees the Ares. We have a little... It's a super overchase, but it turns into a kill. Bonnie gets Raijin to 1 HP. Raijin double actives. Jumps away. Ares no ult. So we're back with Bonnie. And... That's the game right there. Ends with a double kill. On Bonson. 7 to 4 is Bonnie. As a support man, washed support man playing Kronos in uh, 2400 lobby or so. Oh, that's toxic. Where's he going, bro? <laughs> no way they're doing. Alright. I don't know if Titan died or if they have sixed. That game was the most respectable objective based game I've seen. I will say that. I will put that as a contingency.